imagine growing up in an urban environment where you have never experienced overt racism or really even knew what it was. And then you go off to college in a rural Midwest town in Missouri and you immediately face adversity, blatant outright racism, all because of the color of your skin, the texture of your hair, how you walk, how you talk, your disposition. Imagine that this is your introduction to a new world, to college. They say it's the best four years of your life. This will have a lasting experience on your life. And it did for me. And this is my story that I'd like to share with you all today. The idea of not feeling like you belong in a space that you're told that you belong, this type of dissonance will confuse anyone, especially someone who's 18 years old and really just becoming an adult and, and learning life. This idea of not being welcome and being othered and being ostracized is something that can have a long lasting impact. So the story goes like this. My first day of college, I arrive on campus. It's blazing hot, it's about 100 degrees in August. You know, I'm excited, my parents are excited. My younger sister, sibling is excited. We arrive in my dorm room and we're not greeted with the same excitement from my roommate and his parents. We're greeted with shock, admonishment, disdain. And the air immediately left the room. And I knew right then and there that my roommate was racist, that my roommate did not care for me because of the qualities, the salient qualities that I physically displayed. And I would come to find out that my roommate was racist by the language that he used, the Confederate flags that he would display so proudly. Now, I will also find out that my roommate didn't really care about me as a person or my own personal space, using my own product hygiene products, not being considerate of, you know, picking up after himself. And the straw that broke the camel's back was when my roommate decided to use the N-word in front of me. From there, we had a physical altercation and I let my floor advisors, RAs at the time, know about the situation and they essentially did nothing. They merely gave him a slap on the wrist, said that's not cool. And that was it. That was it. That was the justice that I received from such a harmful word that has a history. My roommate would leave after the first semester, but the harm was already done. And I would spend the rest of my life navigating what we know to be the social construction of race. Understanding that I was different, understanding that I was an other. And understanding this construct of white supremacy that is so pervasive, that impacts minoritized folks in so many different ways. But my story doesn't end in sadness and sorrow. It ends in a reclamation. I reclaimed my power. I embraced my blackness. I was soon joined a black esteemed fraternity by the name of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated to be a part of a brotherhood. There, I obtained that sense of belonging that I was looking for. However, it wasn't a panacea. It wasn't enough. I was still at a university that didn't want me there. It, it made it very clear. Being at a predominantly white institution, 
with around 6,000 students and only 200 being black was really challenging for me. And eventually I left. I went back home to a local college, also a predominantly white institution, but there was someone that I met that would change my life forever. His name is Don Bramlett and he oversaw the Black Male Initiative and served as support staff for the Center for Black Studies, which was not a resource that was offered at my school in Missouri. Don took me under his wing. He taught me what it means to be a proud Black man. He taught me what it means to pay it forward and how to mentor others and advocate for yourself. And so I had the opportunity to take what I've learned from someone who means so much to me and share that with others by overseeing the Black Male Initiative at my alma mater, and then going on to start my own later in life. I would then dedicate the rest of my life to higher education and helping others like myself to not experience this awful traumatic engagement that I had with my roommate and that I had with the university to help folks understand that you belong. You belong at the university. You belong at a PWI. And that there are folks like Don who are there to care for you and take care of you and support you and give you those help seeking behaviors that you may not have at 18 years old. From there, I would go on to serve as an admissions counselor working with teenage students from the south and west sides of Chicago, sharing my story, celebrating them and letting them know we have a lot in common, but we also have different experiences. But what I can say is education is a, is a tool of empowerment and transformation and racism and ostracization should not be a deterrent for why you don't go to college or why college is enough space for you. And so from there, I had the opportunity to be an advisor where I helped co-found the Kingsman Initiative to support our black students and help them navigate the trenches of adversity in our society. After my time at the community college, I would land where I'm at today as the coordinator and program manager for the Black Cultural Center, where I get to celebrate Blackness every day. I get to celebrate my salient identity every day, empowering students, giving them agency, and supporting them, not just as students, but as whole persons and promoting the wellness that they need to not just survive, but thrive at a predominantly white institution. So I'm here to tell you all today that my story isn't a story of failure or sadness. It's a story of triumph. It's a story of adversity, but overcoming, overcoming racism that is still pervasive, that is a system that we're still fighting through, but knowing how to navigate it in a way that is empowering and that can be shared with others who are going through similar experiences.